Welcome, Marks, to another edition and the final edition of the Hallmarks Podcast Three Night Christmas Extravaganza Bonanza. This is brought to you in part by the Oh Hi, Oh Guys Productions, powered by RealNerdCorp.com, live on twitch.tv slash RealNerdCorp. If you didn't already know, I am your lead mark for the evening. I am the uh, the mark in chief, the 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 mark in uh, I don't know. Oh I'm, I'm I'm out of it. I'm losing you're, my you're mind. You're the markaholic. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, you got me there. I'm old Saint Mark. Uh, <clears throat> so my name is Alex Fisher. I'm your host for this evening. Joining me as always, my trusty co-host. Uh, I guess if I'm old Saint Mark, that makes you Chad Dolph, the Red Mark Reindeer. Drown you is what I intend on doing now. It's Chad Porto. Drowning you will be my new hobby. I won't kill you. Um, yeah, we uh, we uh, we were supposed to. We usually were, we said we were gonna do this at ten. Things got in the way. I'm running on two hours of sleep. Um. I am not. You know. <laughs> did you see the the uh, the hangman page tweet I retweeted? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll just say it for you. Happy yeehaw, ladies. I hate you. Da 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 da. So I'll do the breakdown of the film because I know Swish is teetering on the edge of exhaustion and stupidity. Hey, I, I remember. Mo- I remember most of this. Uh, hey, hey, I'm not teetering on the edge of stupidity. Years ago, we- I dove. Full bore into the pool that is stupidity. So you've crossed the threshold officially then? I don't need to hold back. <laughs> hey, I know I am an idiot. Well, there's a difference between being dumb and being stupid. Figuring out which one is which is imperative. I think I'm dumb because just like the Jackass song said, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. <laughs> so... Anyways, uh, hey guys, uh, this is the final night of the, uh, hold on, I gotta find the name of it again. (laughs) The, uh, Hallmarks Podcast Three Night Christmas Extravaganza Bonanza. Um, if you missed out on night one, you should go back and listen to it. We watched a Hallmark movie called Family for Christmas starring Lacey Chabert. If you missed out on night two, you should go back and listen to that as well. We watched a, uh, very, uh, very good, very, uh, entertaining christmas slash hanukkah blend movie called holiday date and tonight we are talking about nine lives of christmas starring brandon routh yes i don't think i were saying his name right ruth ruth i could have sworn it's ralph it's probably ralph and i'm probably just second guessing myself don't second guess but this is superman we're good he, he was Superman. And he was the Adam. He was the Adam. And his wife is gorgeous, and I'm going to steal her one day. Maybe. I don't know. Who's he married not. to? Yeah, you, you, I knew you were going to ask, so I had to look her up. Um, she's not. All right. Um, you, you'll know her, hopefully, off the top, because remember the episode where they did the, the naked man sex thing in, in uh, How I Met Your Mother? Yes. Remember the really awful, horrible person who's like, Jewel, now there's a poet. Yes. That's Courtney Ford. That's his wife. Ah. She got big old expressive eyes. So, like, obviously, I'm super into it. What else have I seen her in? She was in Big Bang Theory. She was in Supernatural. She was uh-huh. in Legend of oh, She was in Supernatural. Mm-hmm. I she never was watched Legend Deck Star. Oh. She was in True Blood. Oh, hey, she she voiced Piper from Fallout Four. I have yet to play Fallout Four. Did that come out on PS4? It did. I'm gonna buy that. Um, I lost so nearly just... an entire two months of my life mm-hmm. to Fallout Three, so I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, dating someone you... when I started playing that game. I don't know what happened. Were you in New Vegas? Were you a New Vegas fan? No, we've we've had this conversation before. Yeah, I liked. Yeah, yeah, okay. You, you liked lost. You lost New Vegas. I liked the good game. So like you know. Um, Fallout Four is good. Uh, we actually 
so we did my friends, uh, friends miss, friends Christmas mm-hmm. today. Um, it was me and a couple of friends, um, and we played the Fallout board game Ooh. actually. And it was it took us probably I think four hours to play, hmm. um, but it was a good time. Uh, nobody won. <laughs> no one because that's wins. a possibility in that game. <laughs> Yeah, in post post nuclear uh, Boston, Boston, Boston. Yeah, the fun thing about that game is that it gives you several different scenarios to play. So you can do Fallout Three and play in uh, the Capital Wasteland, Fallout Four where you play in the Commonwealth. Um, you can do Fallout One and Fallout Two as well, I believe. Hmm. I do want to go um, back and finish playing Fallout One. I never, I never played any of the original Fallout's. I, uh, I, I have seen people play through them, and they definitely are a lot harder uh, than the the FPS installments. Yeah, because like you have a step count, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus, it's a lot more freakier. So, yeah. I think. There's oh, for sure. Yeah, there's something about that mid '90s. We're gonna get you kind of mentality that the new games just don't possess. Like they're, they're like kind of like appropriate creepy. Those games were fucking, how can we raise the bar and make it even worse than I have no mouth and I must scream everything we can do or we will do. <laughs> it's, it's because they tried their best to make this, like the 3d modeling of these creatures look good, but they the capabilities just weren't there. So everything looked like a horrible blurry nightmare. You made it even worse. Yeah. Don't ever so, say um, nightmares get better or get worse in the light of day cuz that's clearly that's not true. So, let's talk about this movie though. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about this movie. Um so, I'm assuming you picked this movie for us to watch because it had Brandon Routh in it. Absolutely. I'm a Brandon Routh boy. What can I say? Cool. So, um I'll give you do you want to give the rundown on Brandon Routh's character or do you want Marilee's character? I love her name, Mary Marilee. What what a dumb name. I love it. Yeah, M A R I L E E, Marilee. So, I can do both pretty quickly. Uh Brandon Routh say Playboy fireman who's afraid of commitment because his parents once fought. That's once it. fought. Yeah. It's a very big understatement. No, literally. He only brings up the one time they fought. It was the night of the fire. <laughs> yeah, they got divorced though. Right. Because I'm pretty sure she started the fire. And I'm pretty sure his dad was like, bitch, we getting divorced. I love uh, that you find out later on the big twist about the fireman that rescued uh, Brandon Routh's character, though. Spoiler alert, because we're going to spoil the whole movie, I guess. Um, I mean, not I guess. That's what we're going to do. The guy who saved him is his boss. Is Chief Sam Gregory yeah, Harrison is completely out of nowhere and it made no sense, but whatever. Very, very fighter fighter looking with the mustache in that one. Yeah, yeah, that's not untrue. I love that. <laughs> I love that everyone in that um, firehouse was like, "Listen, you got to not be such a pansy and just fall in love." And then like the one guy's <laughs> like, "Yeah, just give me her number." I, uh, I'm like, these guys are like the worst. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's fucking awful where they're like, man, you need to do something about that. And he's like, I'm not going to do it. And the one dude who's like, well, give me your number. I'll do it. They're like, aren't you married? And he's like, so? It's like, wow, what the fuck? No, no, no. no. The guy who said the number thing was not married. The guy who was uh, married said the something to the effect like, black uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> the I mean, one black guy in the entire movie. Yeah, they had an Asian girl. It's like you know, they're, they're they trying. did have an Asian girl. It's 2014 before Hallmark got super political. You know, they got they had one black guy minorities. and an Asian girl. <laughs> so yeah. the, the black guy is like, "Why do they always hit on you?" And Ralph goes, "It's because you're married." And they are, and he says, "They don't know that." So it's not that he's stepping out; it's he's wondering why they're never interested in him. So like, it, it's not as skeezy as asking for. Yeah, you know a number. I'm trying to then think. Then you have uh, Gregory yeah. Harrison's been a bunch of things. Oh, he was. Um, he's uh, Paul Norris in One Tree Hill. He was the dude who uh, I think was trying to do the uh, the film. He's uh, what's his name's dad? Um, one of the uh, Alfred. 
Julian. Julian's dad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I seen him from. Okay, so you, you were asking about Christmas Anna. So then... Marley, whatever her name is. <laughs> yes, Marley. Uh, Marilee's whole shtick is I love cats and apparently only cats because that's the only animal I talk about. I'm super lonely, but I'm not going to tell anyone. And I'm falling in love with Brandon Routh because he's Brandon fucking Routh. Did I miss anything? Uh, I mean, she's, she's a veterinary student, uh, and a hopeless romantic. I mean... Pretty much sums her up. Yeah. So, the movie kicks off, and I'm not shitting you. The movie kicks off with uh, Zachary Stone, Brandon Routh, uh, like doing his thing, and a fucking stray cat wanders into his home. Well, it starts. It, it starts off with him getting his photo taken by an attractive photographer, and he's very insecure and shy because he doesn't understand why he has to do this. But then, like everyone's taking photos, it's part of the calendar. That comes back yeah. around, so we got we got to mention that because that's a big plot point in the the mayoral house for some reason. So he goes home. He finds a cat being barked at by a dog, and Ralph is like, "Get the fuck out of here, canine bitch!" Then he takes the cat inside, or you know, makes sure the cat's okay, and the cat sneaks inside. Brandon Ralph throws him out like a fucking Flintstone cartoon, but the cat gets back in and throws it out again. The cat comes back with a knife this time. It, it becomes a home invasion story. It's very, it's very messed up. So, Ralph yeah, can't get rid of this cat. a murder mystery. <laughs> no, that's Hallmark's Movies and Mysteries. We're just on Hallmark. <laughs> so, he can't get rid of the cat, and then he just kind of acquiesces to the cat. Like, all right, you can stay one night, because I'm a bachelor cat, and I, I, I don't need any cat holding me down. Turns out he's kind of in a monogamous relationship with a, with a model who he can't really stand, but won't leave him alone, and he won't dump her. So, he's kind of, he's kind of flighty. He's all over the place. He doesn't know what he wants. I think that's pretty yeah. clear. Uh, Very true. Yeah. Eventually, the uh, the cat gets in the way from the uh, with the the model girlfriend, and the model girlfriend throws the cat out quite literally, and that you know pretty much ends the relationship on top of another incident that we'll get to uh, eventually. And, but the uh, the funniest part was like the way she was talking about the cat. I texted you as I was watching, so I'm like, dude. The only thing this movie is missing is the cat trying to send the uh, the, the girlfriend trying to send the cat away to a foreign boarding school so she can have the husband all to herself. It's, it's literally yep. that uh, um, um, twin movie with Lindsay Lohan, just with a cat. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Was parent that? Trap? Yes, it's literally Parent Trap, but with a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so You're not wrong. No, no. Um, uh, so I, I also thought that the movie was going to be uh, basically that darn cat for the longest time, but it didn't turn out to be that way. So, Mary Lou, Mary Lee, what the hell? Mary Lee? Mary Lee. I actually love that name. It's so unique. So, Mary Lee, on the other Mary hand, uh, we, we meet her. She's falling asleep in her veterinarian class. And she, she wakes up and she knows all the answers to all the questions because she's been studying nonstop and she's super good. And then we meet her friend. And then I stop caring about Mary Lee. <laughs> uh, her friend is Sarah, played by Jennifer Sean Garcia. And I'm in love. I think we both yeah, are. her friend, friend, great. Her, mm-hmm. eh, mm-hmm. 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 I would th- that's for the appeal factor. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, eventually, they have a meeting of sorts. Uh, the, the, the firemen get called on a, a, a fire, if you will, and she sees them in the parking lot and makes eye contact with Brandon Routh, and little Doug like heart bubbles start f- plopping by her head. Uh, and then I think they cross paths again at the grocery store and Brandon Ross is buying food for his little cat. She has all the information, including all about cat diarrhea. I don't know about you, but when I'm shopping for a cat I don't technically own, the one thing that will definitely make me fall for a chick is, is talking about cat diarrhea. Yep, that's it. Yep, that's, that's the money shot right there, folks. Ugh, I shouldn't have said that. So, I hate <clears throat> everything. <laughs> so they eventually end up going separately with their own people to a fancy restaurant. She's with her sister and, and brother-in-law. He's with his model girlfriend and her obnoxious friends that he can't stand. They're both smothering them, but for different reasons. So they both end up going outside to get air and they run into one another. 
And they start talking again. <clears throat> this is just a g- giant movie about meat cutes because after that, literally, like the next scene, he has to go to the pet store to drop off the cat because her dad owns the pet store and and the the model owns uh, the, her dad owns the pet store and. And the model hates the cat, so she's like, you're getting rid of the goddamn cat. And he's like, but I've always been a fan of, <clears throat> never mind going on. Mary Lee uh, works at the, at the pet store, and, and she, she's a very much a, a big fan of Brandon Ralph keeping the cat because she, she sees that he's a good dude. So when they, when, they, when they cross paths, they start talking, and Mary Lee's a little, you know, persnickety with, uh, with uh, the model daughter. The model daughter tells her, Fucking grocery store dad, hey, fire the bitch, and he does, and it's just like, wow, that, 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 that's 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 Hallmark evil, not not Disney yet. evil, not yet, but she does hit Disney evil because she throws the cat. Oh out. yeah, <laughs> literally, she throws the cat outside. Um, so Mary Lee gets fired and uh, ends up being jobless. Uh, that ends up kind of being the catalyst for Brandon Routh to to dump his model girlfriend, and he goes searching for Mary Lee to apologize. And in doing so, they have dinner together. She gets evicted from her house because she has a cat that she's not allowed to have. And then Brandon mm-hmm. Routh shows up, and he's like, listen, uh, you fire code 477 auxiliary. No- and, and, and I'm like, all right, yeah, this is going to work. He's going to totally get her, you know, stay in the apartment. And then the- <laughs> it didn't work. She got kicked out anyway. So Brandon Routh is a pretty bad Superman. <laughs> Can't yep. save the day. So he proposes, hey, why don't you move in? There's a adjacent apartment in the house I'm renovating that has its own back door and steps and everything, and you can come and go as you need, and, and I won't even charge you rent because I'm a good guy. And she's like, well, I have no money, so that sounds like the perfect offer. And what do they do during this time period of living together? Do they bond? Do they fight? What do you, what do, what do you think they do during this time period? It's a Hallmark movie. They... They do construction <laughs> and cook, and they cook. It was one hundred percent true. He comes home after it's the three working C's. at construction, cooking, yeah. cats. Yeah, I love that he comes home after working a long, hard day at the fire station to find that she's cooking. He's like, "You're cooking?" She's like, "Yeah, I installed the stove uh, just because I needed, you know, I I wanted to do some actual cooking." And he goes, "You installed the." St- Stove? It's like, well, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, their mom, Marilee and her sister's mom died when they were young. So Marilee kind of had to drop everything to uh, take care of her sister. Mm-hmm. Um, so she knows how to she knows how to do a whole bunch of shit, um, including install a stove. So the stove is so, important because the model girlfriend, the night she threw the cat out, like uh, the hag she is. Lied about making dinner for Brandon Ralph. She's like, I made dinner. And he goes, I know you didn't make dinner because the stove's not plugged in. And I can see the delivery boxes, you whore. Yeah. So and then he also goes, wait. Yeah. Also, Go the cat's, uh, Brandon Ralph's cat's name is Ambrose, by the way. Yep. And, and um, I knew I knew the minute I heard it, I'm like, Zach's going to, uh, the Swisher's going to bring it up. We can't, I mean, we just can't escape it. John Monster. Wish that guy was still Wish that guy was still working somewhere. Shame he died. <laughs> Is that the story? No, it's just the if you're not according to WWE, like that's the fucking WWE mindset. If you're not with WWE, you don't matter. I uh, you may I, as well I, be dead. I hear John Moxley's in Mexico building orphanages. Oh damn! Whooping El Generico's ass. <laughs> El Generico just uh, gets abused by everyone. That poor guy. That poor guy. So that was weird. Yep. So um, the, the the two roommates start, you know, bonding over cats construction and cooking. She starts developing feelings for him, and he starts developing feelings for her. But he's a giant, big old pansy boy because he's like, I can't fall in love. My parents fell in love, and they fought, and then burnt down the house, which is how I became a yeah. firefighter. <laughs> and yep. she she's and then, like, uh, I can't fall in love because everyone thinks I'm homely, and if you don't think that. That that's exactly what they were going for. There's literally a line in this goddamn movie where, like, so what does she look like? And he goes, well, she's pretty, but she doesn't know it. What does that even mean? That's what a bullshit line. <laughs> she's pretty, but she doesn't know it. Ugh. The whole fucking, like, crux of her angle is that, one, she she 
she tries to pass it off as, oh, I don't want to, I have too much on my plate. I can't even think about dating until after I graduate. But it's really is she doesn't think that she's good enough for people. She mm-hmm. doesn't think she's good enough for guys. So she like they literally are like, oh, she's pretty, but she doesn't know it. No, you're either pretty or you're not, and you know it. That's, that's. I mean, that's it. Let's not get too, uh, too fighty about this over here. It's like she's just. I I mean here she's not unattractive. She looks like Robin Lively if Robin Lively was still in her twenties. Yeah. That's the best word. Yeah, to I see it. Only, only with uh, a bit more pronounced jawline. I, it really does. So they did her really dirty in yeah. this movie by being like, you, you are our main star. You are a female lead. Here is your best friend and your sister. <laughs> and it's just like, if we want to be dudes about this, I would say that the lead is like an, a hard nine and a half. Like so good. Then they're yeah. like, and your sister and best friend are hard tens. And you're just like, Really, like, that's like saying I get to win a, a a tall competition, but my best friends are very much taller than me. I know yeah. this is out of pity. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, like fuck off. I'm good. Like, she's a beautiful woman, but like, damn, like they did her no favors. <laughs> True. Uh, and 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 the verbiage to describe her was not even like uh, she's pretty, but she doesn't know. Like, what does that even mean, Brandon? <laughs> She is pretty. Uh, she's very pretty, yes. W- would love to go on a date with her and be rejected because I know how that would go. <laughs> but um, so uh, so uh, they, they move in together. They, uh, he kisses her underneath the mistletoe because her friend who's all like, listen, this is a sexy idea. I like sexy ideas. Why don't you do the kiss under the mistletoe? And she's like, all right. And she does it, and he kisses her on the lips, and he's like, sorry. It's just I had to. Mistletoe rule, and I'm like, oh yeah, you know that that mistletoe law. Mm, it's, it's a big one, especially in Portland, Oregon, which is apparently where they were. Did you catch that? In I Portland? Caught, yeah, I caught it. It's a no, I didn't guess that at all. I thought they were in unnamed city from parts unknown. No, I didn't see any of the Warriors family. And they're hard to miss because no. they just go <laughs> all the time. So you know. Hulk Hogan. Hawk Hogan. Hulk. Hulk. Hogan. Put the plane in a nose drive. Nose dive. Hulk. Hogan. You you put the rocket fuel. <laughs> so uh, load the spaceship up with the rocket fuel. So the uh the two then kind of start to develop feelings for one another and she invites him out to a party with her sister and, and her brother in law. And he, he declines because he, he has a mysterious last second party, not party, but a job thing he has to do. She goes to the to the thing and sees him there and she's like, oh, it's him. And she he's with some blonde chick in a red dress and she kisses him on the cheek. So instead of confronting him for his, you know, horrific lies, she leaves and cries and then moves out the next day because Hallmark. Only later do we find out that Brandon Routh was there because that was the mayor's wife and they're having an affair. Wait, no, this is Hallmark, not Lifetime. He was there because he was promoting the firefighter calendar. And apparently the wife of the mayor is way too involved in the local firefighting community because she's a big fan. (laughs) And she's like, oh, well, that makes sense. He wasn't lying. He's not a pig. He's a good guy. But that basically leads up to the point where the firefighter father figure of Brandon Ralph convinces him, like, hey, remember when I saved your life that one time? He's like, yeah, I kind of changed my entire life. He's like, well, I'm going to do it again because I got that kind of fucking power over you. And he's basically like, go get her. And Brandon Ralph's like, who am I to argue with fate? (laughs) So he runs off to get her. And he does it by how? Do you remember how he went and got her? We super love is super illegal. (laughs) Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee that is woo. That's the dumbest thing you've ever done. <laughs> he literally jacks the fire engine from the fire station to which he's the only person at. There could be yeah. people dying 
And Brian and I was like, nope, I need to go confess my love to my girl in the middle of a pet adoption on Christmas because what is this movie? <laughs> and then, like, some callback to tigers and lions and they make out on top of a fire truck. And, yeah. The funniest part about this whole movie, though, was her friend is, like, super, super thirsty, as the kids say. She just needs all the D she can get. And she's on a fucking website called Just Dessert. Now, she explains it like, oh, it's like a party, and you go and you have cake, and if you don't get together, well, at least you have cake. But it's called Just Dessert, which is a euphemism for just sex. Yeah, it's 100% a euphemism for sex. I've heard it so many times where it's a, the... You want to come up for dessert? Ready for, yeah. Like, come you, on. Uh, you looking for the just dessert? Rock likes the pie. Poontang pot. <laughs> well, he also likes cherry. He does like cherry. He does like cherry. He likes peach, you know, pumpkin pie even. Yeah. So that kind of becomes like the running gag for me is, is like every time like the friend is like, you need to go to one of these parties. Yeah, I bet she does. <laughs> You big old floozy. She needs to get some dessert. <laughs> she needs to get her some desserts. Uh, jeez, it was definitely a thing, man. Uh, so that's about it. Like the the movie's like not super complicated. It's mostly forty minutes of Brandon Ralph talking to a cat. So like, I don't good get, amount of characters talking to animals. Yeah, I I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem with Brandon Ralph having fictitious conversations with a cat. I mean, because let's be honest it's, here, that that was pretty awesome. It's very lightheartedly goofy. Oh, it's so goofy. Yeah, and I think, I think it's, I think it's a good dichotomy of three movies that we go here because I feel like Family for Christmas was supposed to be like the the heartwarming one of a, a a cold businesswoman who learns to love the spirit of Christmas and a family mm -hmm. and learns to yearn for a family. You know, yeah, there were little goofy moments in it, but like it was mostly supposed to be like her learning from her mistakes and growing as a person. Mm -hmm. Holiday date is like a good mix of the two. It's goofy. It has antics, but at the same time, it, it teaches several valuable lessons, including the fact that Christmas isn't just the most important holiday of this season. You know, there are many other holidays that we should cherish and respect if you celebrate them, including Hanukkah. Um, and this one, which was just like, cats, Brandon Routh, fire trucks, eh? Eh? Like, it really didn't, like, the, the story just doesn't, hang like add up it, it like it's just goofy um but i really enjoy it and i think that sometimes you just need to have fun with a movie and this movie is fun well <clears throat> brandon ralph is so goddamn charming he's even a great likable villain like you root for him when he's the villain granted he's only been the villain once in his entire career but still it's brandon ralph he's fantastic Love that, yeah, Brandon. He's Lowe. awesome. He's great. Yeah. The him, uh, the female lead was great. Very likable. Very enjoyable. Her her her. I'm not so sure about myself. Antics really worked. She's yeah. a tall glass of water, though. I I don't really know why she would have any doubts about herself. Again, not really happy with the way they portrayed her. And, like, the dress yeah. that she had, like, the big, like, it, your beautiful dress, like, that, like, it wasn't even that nice of a dress. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh, girl, they are not doing you favors. Like, the one time when you finally have a leading man in a Hallmark movie that doesn't completely suck the charisma out of the room, they do her dirty. A hundred percent. Ugh, I feel bad for this woman. Although I do love her name, Mary Lee. Mary Lee. Mary Lee. Although, yeah, it, it very, it's very good. I, I don't like the constant, like, oh, you'll meet my boyfriend at the party motif. What's I, your boyfriend's name? Brown, Brown eyes. eyes. So let's hit the Hallmark checklist because there's always, there's always, there's like five staples of a Hallmark movie. 
Swisher, yep. did, did we have a cute kid and or a cute cat or a cute pet? We had a cute we had two cute pets in Ambrose the cat and Queenie the cat. Queenie was cute. If you're into cats. Queenie, Queenie I, I, I like I like cuter. I like Queenie's whole like look at my fur. It's feathery, bitch. I, I dug Queenie is very fluffy. She's fluff-tastic. So, so we had that. Did we have a centerpiece location that was not a house? Yes. Uh, we had the fire station. Yes, we did. Good job. Did we have some kind of cutesy and or obnoxious skill set slash job title for one of the main characters? Like a... Um, uh, a bakery uh, uh, a maker who only makes cupcakes for puppies. Nonsense. Do you count... Well, so I could go either way with this. Do you count very cat-obsessed veterinary... Vet, veterinary... Veterinary... More or less, kind of, I would say that that's okay. a, a debatable one, but there is one. Then what about... What about part-time fireman, part-time home renovator flipper? Yep. <laughs> He's a fireman who's good with his hands and flips houses when he's not doing 24-hour shifts. Also, he, he's it, also he, he buys the houses to live in them while he flips them. Does not own a home. Nope. He, he's also very, uh, very mysterious. So, so he checks those boxes. Is yes. there a, a saintly father figure and or best friend who guides the main character to the end? Oh, you know that Gregory Harrison as Chief Sam is there to dispense his mustachioed wisdom. <laughs> the, the, the friend of Mary Lee also qualifies. And oh, the yes. Sister too. Yes. So there's, there's technically. And the sister. There's so, three. So, so we have the, the fatherly friend advice. We have the uh, uh, obnoxious job. We have the central location, and we have the pet and or child. Was there, and this is the final one. We should probably write these down. I'm going to write these down because th th this is going to be part of our new checklist as well. So we had the uh, kid and or child. We had the central. Kid non and or child. Yep, that or kid and or. Central non-house no, location. Chad. Oh, Chad, God Chad. damn it. Kid and child are the same yes, thing. Yes, I'm aware. I'm aware. Pet. Shut up. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> kid and or pets. Uh, <laughs> technically, kid is what? A baby goat? I'm technically right. Shut up. Central right, non-house location. I spelled location wrong. See what you're doing? See what you're doing to me? We had the uh, obnoxious job title. Yep. We had the saintly father figure or best friend giving advice. Yep. Do you remember what the fifth tenant of a Hallmark movie is? No. Dead parents. Oh, dead parents. Damn it. We had fucking dead parents. <laughs> it's dead. It's, it's, it's Hallmark bingo. Oh, wasn't it? Wasn't it dead parents and or a uh, broken home? Mm, I thought it was dead parents uh, okay, so it's dead parents, but it's also we, there's six. There's not five. There's six. Broken relationship. Yes. Yeah. So there's six technically. There's six tenants of a Hallmark movie. Some sort of broken relationship. Yeah. Somebody be, be has it, to a, have like a. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like parents are divorced, or or just broken up, or just got dumped, or in the middle of a relationship. Left at the altar. Left at the altar. Um, your dog chose your ex-boyfriend over you. I'm sure that's in a Hallmark movie. Probably. You have, you have amnesia and you don't remember that you're married, so you have fun time with the doctor who saves your life. That might be a Lifetime movie. This but those are the six tenets movie. of a Hallmark movie. And you need to usually hit four for a good one. We hit all six. This movie hits all six. She's fantastic. Damn, dude. This movie is the quintessential Hallmark movie. Yeah. But, Chad, mm. how does it stack up when it comes to the rating scale? I was trying to be dramatic. I don't know if it works. We might have to come up with a better name. No, it's, it's the rating scale. Let's, let's rate the, the bitch. The, the Mark-o-meter. <laughs> the the, the Markasms? <laughs> the, the marking out meter. 
the mom the mom oh nope nope not doing that one <laughs> all right so um if you guys haven't listened to the last two episodes we're gonna give you a brief rundown on how this works there are five categories that we judge a hallmark movie on it is based on its acting its writing its design its appeal and its enjoyability so we will rank these five categories out of five hallmark crowns the lowest possible score in any cat- given category can be one. Highest possible score can be five. Cannot go under or over, and there cannot be any decimal points. At the end of our uh, rating, we will add up the scores, we will take their averages, and we will get their total possible score out of 100. 100 being the best, and I think the worst you could possibly get is... Pff, what? I mean, if we give it, a, if we give each movie a one... Each category a one, that's five from each of us. So 20%. 10 divided by... Uh, 40. No, f- 5 divided by 25 is... is 25. Oh, yeah, it's 5 divided by 25, yeah. A 20, so a 20, at, the lowest possible score being 20 out of 100. Of course, the best possible is getting 100. So, we are going to jump right into our ratings. Chadward, mm. how did you feel about the acting of Nine Lives of Christmas? It was the smoggiest thing I've ever seen, which makes it a five. Hundred percent. Brandon Routh delivers in everything that he does. They, if they had not given Merrily, uh, who is played by Kimberly Sustad, Sustad, um, if they had not given her the whole like inferiority complex, like her character would have been perfectly well rounded. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Even that is not able to detract from the fact that you finally have a Hallmark movie with a likable male lead and a likable female lead, both of which are attractive and both of which are trying their best to make it work with the other one. And they both knocked it out of the park. Acting gets a five out of five from me and from Chad. They're both broken people trying to find a reason to not be broken. Exactly. Yeah. So, how do you feel? How well do you feel Nine Lives of Christmas was written? Mm, we hit all six tenets of a Hallmark movie. Yes. We had the cutesy, obvious ending. We yep. had absolutely no reason for them not to be together until the ending. 100%. And we had the stupid meet cute that happened three different times. I'm going to give it a five. Damn. It it is it is like nine lives of Christmas is able it might be running away with it because I am inclined to agree with you. The only hang up that I have that would have maybe brought it down to a four for me if I didn't like it so much was the again going back to the inferiority complex that uh, Marilee's character has. They didn't need to give it to her. They didn't need to write it in for this movie to work. But I understand why they did it, and that's the biggest thing. Even if you don't like something if you can understand why they did it you can agree with it you know you can you can you can enjoy the movie still so i'm i'm with you another five out of five from both of us the design of this movie so design talking about the set dressing the locations the background the general ambiance of the movie how do you feel nine lives of christmas stood up on the design I'm going to give it a four. Yeah. I was going to give it a five, but then I saw the uh, the Portland Fire uh, um, Department thing on the, on the side of the, uh, uh, I think it was the side of the fire engine. So I'm like, uh, I don't know. Portland kind of annoys me. It's it's still rustic and low-key enough to make you think, eh, it's a small, smallish major town, but they're so obnoxious there. You know? So I'm good. I'm good on that. It's yeah. like setting your movie in San Francisco. Like, no, there's no charm there. There's no wholesomeness there. So I'll give it a four because everything else worked. I like the, the, the rustic house. I like the little tiny apartments that her friend had. It was literally just a staircase, a living room, a kitchen, and a room off to the back. And it was like the size of like a, uh, like a bus in terms of like width. I loved it. I wanted to live yeah. in that. That was great. Um, so I loved it. So, But I'll give it a four, though. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more generous with you. I have no issues with Portland. They've done nothing to me. Um, I don't think I have any issues with any Portland sports teams. Checking. 
Just checking. No. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with another five. Um, the, the apartment, the house slash uh, combo apartment, very, like, cute. It, it's very simple. They didn't have to do a whole lot. And part of the charm was them doing the fix-up of it uh, together. And, like, I think that makes it makes it more so, like, interesting. The fact that they're, this set is changing. Mm-hmm. You know, this set is literally going from a a house that is in the middle of being flipped to a a, a home, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's through the shared love of the two tenants. Um, so it's going to get a five from me. Um, there was a, a a moment within this where she says something to the effect like, um, uh, like you know, the only way you can get like pearl white is if you put like eggshell on top of clamato or whatever the fuck it was. I'm like, this is dumb. And like you can see in his eyes, he's like, "That is the color I was going for," and I'm like, "Oh, that's the color I was going for." That's when he fell in love. <laughs> uh, it is he fell in love when she painted his walls? I don't know how you can make not that a it, euphemism. I was about to say, I don't know. How you can, well, I guess there is a, a euphemism there, but we won't go there on this show. <laughs> no, um, the next ca- category overall appeal Mm -hmm. do you think this movie is marketable to a massive audience not just hallmark fans would it be an enjoyable movie by the general public well it got picked because i saw brandon routh and i went "Ooh, i like him so yes but i would also Mm -hmm. say that to get peak five dumb you would need brandon routh and courtney ford or like brandon routh and lacey chabert or brandon routh and uh winnie cooper like you would need to yeah. hit like both notes. I didn't. I still don't know who this who played Mary Lee. I don't know who that is. I I, I can't say I've ever seen her in anything uh, outside of this movie. So I can't right. say it's a five. But I would say yeah. I literally only picked this movie because Bran- I didn't even know what the movie's about. I didn't read the synopsis. I saw Brandon Routh. I'm like, we're doing that one. So I'd say it's a four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, I think Brandon Routh has a you know massive appeal. Um, He's a standout character in a lot of things that he's massive in. appeal Scott for Pilgrim. for Hallmark. Standout character in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. He was great um, in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. He was great in Superman. He's fantastic. great in everything he does. I can't. He was great in Chuck, and yeah. he's the villain. Oh, true, true. Man, Brandon Routh. He's um, range. The thing, the thing is, is that I I agree with you. It's a it's that the female lead doesn't have mainstream appeal. And also, I think that the premise of this movie is just a little bit goofy. Like that's, that's the whole reason why we liked it, though. That's the reason why we liked it. But you and I are hallmarks. Yes. That's eh. True. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. See what I did? Yeah. I incorporated yeah, the name of the podcast into the conversation. Wow, comedy, folks. Um, we understand it. Um, okay. So, so I'm right so, there with you. So, 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 so I need to hijack this real fast. So I googled. Yeah. I Googled Kimberly Sestad, who plays Mary Lee. Um, so yeah. the reason she's in everything, she's in everything Canadian. <laughs> ah, but I, 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 I looked at her Google uh, uh, portfolio and I'm just thinking to myself, she did not look th- like that in this movie. They, they really did her a service. They, yeah. I think they, I think they used a lot of makeup on her in this movie, but not to make her stand out. <laughs> they used it to try and make her more bland. Yeah, and I don't know why they did because, good golly, <laughs> homely. Not, not this, not no. She doesn't pretty, but she doesn't know it. <laughs> she knows it. She, 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 she fucking knows it. Yeah. God damn, <laughs> the her jawline's sharp enough to kill a man. <laughs> I was going to say her jaw, jawline is sharp enough to cut glass. You think a glass cutter couldn't kill a man? Not really. You're not using it right. <laughs> well, I guess anything can kill a man if you shove it down their throat and they die from asphyxiation. True. It's very true. Um, I guess I could kill so you now, with a wet in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> we'll meet in the middle on this one. So now the final category, Chad, mm-hmm. enjoyability. 
how enjoyable is this movie how fun is this movie i mean yeah but why are we even spending time if you haven't figured out by us talking about it up until this point how much fun this fucking movie is from start to finish literally it starts off goofy it ends goofy it's fun it's full of laughter and you get that genuine heartfelt moment of love at the end of the movie between the two main characters it's a five out of five guys like this movie takes the cake and i told you when we started the three night christmas extravaganza bonanza that nine lives of christmas was going to be the standout star not to say that holiday date didn't give it a run for its money but i mean just i you gotta you gotta think about it man like this this movie is good yeah it's so good so uh go ahead and vamp chadward while i figure out our total score for nine lives of christmas the fuck is vamping you don't know how to you know what vamping means no is that like when i try to kill solid snake no it's it's chad it means that you sparkle in the sunlight and you pretend to suck blood duh i'm gonna smack you no, it means to like fill time. Oh, okay. It was a good movie. It was thumbs <laughs> up. Two, two even thumbs up. Um, Kimberly Sestad is, is gorgeous, but they did her no favors in this movie. I don't know why. Brandon Routh is gorgeous, and they did him every favor in this movie because he's gotten him Brandon Routh. So of course they did. Um, the real, real enjoyable. I think this is where Hallmark movies really hit their stride. It's when they're not trying to be. Like, serious. Granted, how many Hallmark movies really are? Some of them are, but not really. But when they go totally obscure to the point where Brandon Routh is having about 20 minutes of a 90-minute movie spent talking to a cat, I think you're in peak territory. It hit six Hallmark credentials. The, the, the six <clears throat> must-haves in every Hallmark movie. Pretty people yes. doing dumb things. It's like, yeah. Yep. So what should we, what, what, what right. should we get, yo? Chad? The computers have run and crunched all the numbers. Bitch, you use it. It is back. The numbers are back. I have the final results. Nine lives of Christmas gets a ninety-eight out of a hundred. That sounds about right. So that's it, like what a twenty-four out of twenty-five. Uh, twenty-four, literally a twenty-four point five. So you gave it all fives. I gave it uh three. I gave it four fives and a four. You gave it three fives and two fours. You didn't do your math right then. I gave it a 24 out of 25. You gave it a 23 out of 25, right? If I gave it three fives and then... No, that's not how you do that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was off by one number. Big deal to be off by a number. So you gave it. It's it's a ninety. It's a ninety four. I'm sorry. So that would be. I I was off. I accidentally entered you as a um. I don't know why my brain said that you gave it all fives. I entered you as a twenty five. Yeah, that's not right. So yeah, it'd be a twenty three yeah. and a half. Um, yes, it's a twenty three and a half out of twenty five, which yeah, is still great. Yes, very good. This is, um, ver- this is like it could air as a TV movie on ABC level good. We don't get in yes. that territory often. A hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Ninety four out of a hundred. We've said that we're going to come out with an official uh, ranking, like a grading scale, basically. You know, ninety to a hundred, um, you know, eighty to eighty nine, and so and so forth. Obviously, a one hundred is perfect. This movie is untouchable. It's undeniable. You have to watch. It's a mainstream audience success. Everybody would love it. A 94 to be six points off from perfect. Come on, guys. You got to give that some weight. Uh, six to per- six to, percentage points, to be clear. Six percentage points. Yes, six percentage points. Um, it's a point and a half mm-hmm. off from being perfect. Correct. Um, to, and to, to give you some comparisons, if you didn't watch – Night one, you didn't listen to. I'm sorry, we're not. You can't see us, nor would you want to. Um, well, you wouldn't want to see Chad. I'm handsome, but so that does it for the last edition of the Hallmark <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I have to go drown a bitch. <laughs> um, 
so to give you some perspective, night one, we did Family for Christmas starring Lacey Chabert. Got a 52 out of 100. You know? it's it's It was a movie. Wasn't, wasn't bad, but it was definitely an average Hallmark movie. Mm-hmm. We got bumped up a little bit when we made our way to night two and talked about a holiday date. Got 78 out of 100. Pretty good. It's a pretty average movie. This, you know, yeah, it's leaning more towards the good side. So to bump up a total of well, 16 points from there and get into the 90s, night three with nine lives of Christmas, Brandon Routh, Kimberly Sustad, you guys knocked it out of the park. If it weren't for a few minor things, like being uh, located in Portland, um, we yeah, who knows? You guys almost took home a perfect score. So, wow, what a what an adventure this has been. We should add a subconscious, not really part of the grading scale, grading scale, where we uh, we grade the innuendos, because <laughs> this would get a five. Yeah, just for dessert. Very true. Painting the walls white, like mm-hmm. I, I I know what you're going for, <laughs> Hallmark. I see it. I'm aware. Hall, Hallmark, you perverts. <laughs> It's oh man! To look well, a lot like Christmas. <laughs> so, well, guys, we're we're yeah. off. We're done. Go we're we're gone until yeah. New Year's Eve. You and I will probably reconvene before then to record a show. But we will be back as a as a site, as a broadcast entity on New Year's Eve, probably either noon or three or or whenever. I don't know how many shows we're gonna have or now or how long they're gonna run. Uh, you and I will probably reconvene Monday, I would say, to record ours. Because I have, I, have pl- I have a feeling you're going to want to have New Year's Eve with your gal pal. Yeah. So, so pre-recording for you would probably be the best. So we'll find out which day works best yeah. for you between now and New Year's Eve. Um, so there's that. Uh, so be sure to tune in, twitch.tv. I think we're going to run on the Real Nerd Corp Twitch channel just because that cool. way um, – you know, it's 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 the name brand. It's it's all that and and what have you. I'm gonna see if I can't you talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm talking about the uh, the the marathon streaming up. But uh, well, is I was gonna it... say, yeah, yeah. Go on. I was gonna say on at least on that you're not labeled as you know wrestling only, so you can talk right. about whatever you want. Right. Mix it up. But there's a way to broadcast the channel on your channel, isn't that isn't that a thing on Twitch? I've seen that before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. So I'm gonna try to do yeah, that. It's like um, it's That's called right. hosting. Yeah, I'm gonna try to host the the other one. So so that way both get it. So that's that's the idea. Um I think that's it. Real nerdcorp.com, R E A L N E R D C O R P dot com. We're on Twitter at N E R D C O R P. We're on Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. Uh, twitch.tv backslash real nerd corp uh, twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground if you want to follow us on the wrestling side of things we're also on youtube at youtube.com backslash uh, wrestling underground and or no i think it's the wrestling underground on youtube and nerd corp on youtube by searching swish what are your personals you guys can find my personal stuff you can find my twitter over at x 2000 gregs that's x two zero 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 g r e g s you can find my personal Instagram over at 2000 Gregs, 2000. That's three zeros followed by G R E G S, all one word. Chad, where can they find your personal stuff? Chad Nerdcorp on Twitter, C H E D N E R D C O R P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hunt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the Hallmarks Podcast three night Christmas extravaganza bonanza for Chad Porto. I'm Alex Fisher. We thank you very much. We will see you for the New Year's Marathon. May your Christmas, your Hanukkahs, your uh, Kwanzaas, whatever it is that you celebrate this time of year, may it be merry and bright, and may you have a fantastic end to what has been kind of, not kind of, a pretty shitty year. Um, You know, we here at the Ohio Guys Productions send all of our love out to you guys. We thank you all for listening and being a part of this crazy, stupid podcast that we do. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. We will see you guys later. Uh, until then, I mean, you guys know what to do. Keep marking 